like curled your hair on a Saturday. What's up? For you, <laughs> Juliet. I feel so uh, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> well, let me, just did... let me introduce you, these uh, guys to you. Heather Rogers has delivered programs for the award-winning cybersecurity organization, Acalvio, at RSA, at Oracle Open World, and at UC Systems Statewide Cybersecurity Summit. She has customized programs for high-tech companies such as Genetech, I don't even know if I'm saying these right, Applied Materials, Synopsis, JSR, Google, and the leading research firm, Markets and Markets, and the world's largest platform for trading Bitcoin, BitMax. As a speaker, trainer, and facilitator, and mind magician, that sounds evil. That sounds evil, Heather. <laughs> She's created programs for over 4,000 public and private events. As a consultant, Heather combines epigenics with cutting edge technologies to help people optimize the body and brain for peak performance. Heather is also presented at TEDx and venues ranging from Barack Obama's inaugural ball in Washington, DC to Caesar's Palace in Las Vegas. In January, 2018, Heather performed for Hillary Clinton in San Francisco. She has been a speaker, trainer, and magician for 27 years. So welcome, Heather. Now I'm gonna move over to Ross. Ross, didn't I just do this yesterday? Yeah. <laughs> I've got it memorized now. Growing up in Rockford, Illinois, Ross traveled halfway around the world with a backpack to teach school in Kenya in his 20s. In his 30s, he pivoted again to California at the birth of Silicon Valley, building a successful branding company in Palo Alto, California. Ross is focused on high tech and wine with a personal passion. By his 40s, he was making his own wines in Sonoma County, earning national acclaim. And look at all those awards behind him. We talked about this yesterday. In, in 2019, Halleck Vineyard was judged number one Pinot Noir in North America, the number one Sauvignon Blanc in the United States, and number one white wine in the state of California in the most highly respected competitions in the country. The business has thrived on personal relationships with customers buoyed by travel to his vineyard home. With the COVID-19, COVID another pivot has been thrust upon him. Halleck Vineyards launched a virtual tasting salon um, just this week, and the response has been encouraging, but there are other pivots that he's going to talk about today. So welcome, guys. Yay! Thanks for Exciting. having us. Yeah. So I am really excited about your pivots. Can you talk a little bit about what you did in this crisis? Because we've sort of been talking about pivoting the whole way along. What did you personally do with your businesses? And I don't care who goes first. <laughs> the ladies first. Aw, oh, that's lovely. Especially Ross. ones that curled their hair and put on makeup. Mm. Yes. Kind of Saturday, <laughs> yes. Well, it's really great to be here, and I'm so excited to contribute in any way that I can because this is a very, um, I'm not going to use the, the, the word that everybody's using, it's a very unique opportunity for us to regroup, recalibrate, reset, and relaunch. Um, so I am a speaker, magician, team builder, and um, in, in pretty much overnight, um, everything evaporated, all of my events canceled, and um, there was nothing on the horizon. And then in the event industry, um, you know, people who we used to go to for events have lost their jobs. So it's, it's we don't know what the future of events are going to be, probably the end of handshake right? What are, what are buffets? Are they gone? You know, we really, it's going to be a different world. And so I, was, I got clear that oh, I no, buffets. To <laughs> oh, no, buffets. <laughs> we can fight that. So, uh, so I'm going to talk about two things. Smorgasbords. <laughs> well, what was that, Ross? Smorgasbords. <laughs> I know. Let's call it, let's do it that way. And um, this is the Peace and Pivot Summit. So I want to talk about a, and I'm, I'm not taking too long, but I want to talk about the internal process that I went through and then what's happening pragmatically. Um, uh, just internally, I realized that there, with all the uncertainty like coming at me, I realized that there is one certainty in life. There is only one certainty, and that is the fundamental primordial truth of uncertainty. I can rest comfortably in that things are always going to be changing. They always have. 
and that there's a lot I can't control. I can't control a pandemic. I can't control my own emotions coming. I can't control my own sensations, but I can control one thing. And that is how I react and how I speak about my situation. And that's very empowering. So three things happened for my pivot to launch my pivot. One was I spun out like everyone and I realized that what was happening was separate from my reaction. So I pulled my reaction off of it and then I just was what with what so. And when you realize what so, that could be translated into so what. Stuff has always been happening, stuff's always gonna happen and I can pull my reaction. And then the second step was I stopped resisting and I accepted. I said, okay, I can be with this. I'm gonna allow it, I'm gonna, and that created a space for step three, which where I choose to take a powerful stand and make powerful decisions as an entertainer and educator. And I was being that person. And I can go into practical um, ways I'm utilizing this, but you know, Ross, why might you share about what kind of launched your pivot? Well, I'm, I'm in total concert with uh, your uh, platform, let's call it. Um, and so I would say the same thing launched my pivot. Although I, I will say that we had a, a, another contributing factor, which is unique to our, our location. And uh, that is, uh, I, I live in uh, Western Sonoma County in uh, Northern California. And uh, uh, in the last uh, three years, uh, we've gone through just horrendous um, environmental impact, let's call it. We've had these fires. And uh, because my business uh, thrives on personal contact and visitation, and the media, uh, like it is today, working against our peace and well-being, uh, painted California as a dystopia, uh, people stopped coming. And so we realized actually some time ago that we had to pivot, that we could no longer rely on people coming to our tasting room, which happens to be my dining room in my home on the vineyard, um, to have personal contact with us. And so we uh, changed our entire business plan to, uh, instead of hanging out, waiting for people to come, to start traveling from place to place around the United States and uh, hole up in Airbnbs and host pop-up tasting rooms. We call it tasting salons for um, and using our wine club member as what, what in software would be called our installed base and having them invite friends and uh, host tasting events uh, in cities all around the country. And so I was actually on one of those trips when the pandemic um, took place and you know hopped on my return flight, which was almost empty back to California to find that there was a ship that was, um, you know, had just, uh, had just disembarked in uh, San Francisco Bay and had spread the coronavirus throughout my, my community. So that uh, reality, um, along with the previous uh, reality, co you know, I guess um, uh, converged. And within days we had launched uh, what we call our virtual tasting salons and uh, set up a, 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 um, a set of products and uh, launched it to our wine club members that they could buy uh, packages of our wine and cheeses and local delectables from, that we put together with our neighbors. And, um, I, uh, and they can book online and we enter their living room and they can order this for their family and friends and we can all actually, just like we're doing here, share in a tasting experience. Um, from the comfort of our homes. And that has been um, incredibly well received. And we were picked up by Forbes magazine last week, uh, picked up by a local um, uh, glossy publication called Walnut Creek, Walnut Creek Magazine. And uh, I literally got an email from the executive editor of Wine Spectator uh, asking to have a conversation with me. So this, we, we seem to have hit a nerve here. Ross, I'm curious as to, uh, when it first happened, did you, like at what point did you figure out, okay, I'm gonna to have to go virtual, how the hell do I do that? Well, um, I have it a- It sounds like it was really easy and I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm a wondering if it really was that easy. Yeah, you know, honestly, it was really that easy. 
Um, I've been, you know, working on Zoom for some time. I have a background from Silicon Valley, as, as Juliet uh, suggested. So technology has always been sort of, um, you know, woven into my uh, first and second adulthood. And uh, so um, when it became clear that we had to touch people in a different way, uh, it was not that big of a pivot, honestly. Uh, there was, you know, and, and I have to give credit to my partner. So I, my, one of my partners is my ex-wife, Jennifer, and we have been divorced for 15 years. We work together literally every day. Um, and uh, we have a, a sommelier on staff, uh, Stephanie, who's uh, a bit younger than us. And she's, uh, you know, plugged into social media and, and uh, the latest and greatest technologies. And, you know, I'm, I'm good at vision. I'm not very good at the tactical execution parts. And they just, they just dove right in and make sure all the T's were dotted and all the, um, wait, all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed so that it was a seamless experience from website to personal contact. And I give them all the credit for that because boy, when they were telling me all the details that had to be worked out, you know, it's much easier to think about than to do. And I have a great team so that, that made it much easier than, um, than I'm making it seem. That's awesome. So Ross, you also incorporated your Sonoma community into your subscription wine or membership. I'm not quite sure if you call it membership or subscription. You included a lot of your local uh, people in this as well, didn't you? Well, um, in fact, on a number of levels. So uh, the first thing we did is we, we reached out to uh, the dairies uh, that are literally in our neighborhood. And we chose one because they had a selection of cheeses and they were ready to go and said, yes, we can drop ship for you. We can, you know, they were like literally a, a single telephone call. And so I drove the 10 minutes to her, her dairy, picked up a whole selection of cheeses, brought them home, tasted through them and paired them with our different wines. And then we have a chocolatier uh, also uh, in Sebastopol who makes wine, makes chocolates with our wine. So that was a natural um, to bring that into the tasting. And then there's, a, um, and then on a more national level, there's a, a product company called Coravin. Let's see, I'll, I'll do a little plug for them here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are they paying you? No, I'm just kidding. No, well, they're not, but they're an incredible partner. So this is a device that allows me to pour wine from a full bottle and never open the bottle. And that bottle will stay good and fresh for months. Ah. I so, love that. It's such an awesome thing. It's, yes. it's an awesome thing. And so they came in and said, yes, we're with you. Um, as long as you don't uh, divulge the price and bundle it, because they gave us a really, really great price on this, which, you know, would, would uh, you know, from a just a pure business standpoint, we couldn't sort of publish the price. So we bundled it so that people could actually get these wines and not have to commit to drinking the whole bottle with us, you know? So um, it made the, the, the price of the package much more uh, accessible because th those wines that like, they could do a, a few tastes and then they could leave them for months and, and enjoy them whenever they wanted to enjoy them. It's so a totally Laura, foreign, Laura Blanc con is foreign concept in my house is like like you're not finishing a bottle of wine. It's like um, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. see, if you were if you were with your partner, husband, um, and I, you had three bottles of wine in front of you, it, it might be kind of a challenge to to uh, to drink them all at once, and and it, and and I might not get the pleasure of of the best of you at by the end of the tasting. <laughs> Yes, that's very true. You really perked Laura Blanc's ears up when you talked about the uh, the, the opener. <laughs> yes. So Heather, how did you how did you pivot and then and then market this to people who were expecting you? I mean, were you most mostly marketing to meeting planners who are now unemployed, or were you? How did you market yourself to the to the companies to say there's more that I can do? Yeah, it's just a numbers game. I reached out to my, my client list and said, you know, given that you've seen me do this at high level customization, I can also enter your Zoom meetings because everyone's telling me that they're having a hard time keeping their people from checking out during the calls. 
And it was a discovery process because I've learned through my marketing that tech companies are used to Zoom calls. And so there's nothing new for them. And they work at home a lot. And so they're already out of their comfort zone. So they aren't really needing entertainment at the end of their Zoom meeting. So I'm now looking at organizations that aren't used to working at home. Um, the three packages that I'm offering are uh, a, a delightful uh, recognition or celebration at the end of the meeting, uh, sort of an MC for the agenda, and then team building. And so there's still a lot of R&D going on with this, but I'm finding it's just, you know, you're reaching out, um, but it's true. My network of event planners, they, they, you know, they aren't putting on events, but they are interested, they're very creative. And so they're, they're creating um, a, uh, you know, wonderful, interesting, you know, beyond the Zoom experiences. And I'll, I'll share with you a couple of uh, things that I've, that I've learned that expands the experience. Uh, right. One thing is that the, re the relationship building starts long before the event in all cases. So we could be doing our, we could expanding, the, we could expand the discovery conversation in our lead calls, our pre-lead, you know, conversations. So we could find out more about what their pain points are, meet them more deeply, and then service them more deeply. Um, sending materials ahead of time. Uh, Ross, you're on it. Um, if you're a juggler out there, you can have the company buy juggles and get them to them. Um, it's true that some organizations have more money than morale. Some do. And they need to keep their people happy because otherwise they're not going to keep high performing. And so there are companies out there that have that. A caterer can send a, a recipe ahead of time and they can all get together and each person in their house can prepare the recipe and then they can show it and then there could be a contest, right? There's so many new ways to lead into it. Uh, we're going to have mixers in our in ILEA, our event association, where people dress up and then we'll be in breakout rooms, rooms networking. As a magician, I could send magic effects ahead of time for the team building. And I could actually use the medium as the magic. I could hand um, a object to the screen and then my cohort on the other end could pull it from behind. And so we're handing objects through the screen. And I'm gonna share with you right now an innovation. I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can actually produce from midair There we go, a hammer. Now, I didn't really deliver that well, but check it out. I mean, this is thinking inside the box, right? This is my background, but it's not. I'm actually using black art to, you know, because this is my real room. So there's so much, this is an example of things that you can do. I can get rid of it now, but you know, producing, it's brilliant. It's really because I can make, you know, if I, if I hadn't had a chance to run it very well, but if I can do this, it looks like it's just coming straight out of nowhere, right? And so helping people expand on that. Now, um, other things I'd like to share, I'll go ahead and move this now, is um, teaching clients how to use Zoom. Not everybody is familiar with Zoom. And may you might even be aware that I can now, as a magician, I can have the CEO put his hands up and I can control his mouse. I can, you know, take hold of his mouse on his permission, obviously, but they don't know, everyone else doesn't know that I'm, you know, controlling. So there's things you can do with tech that people aren't aware of. And so sending out a letter ahead of time that instructs people on that. And I'll just give you, I'm going to put this in the chat. I'm going to give you some practical, tactical things you might put in that letter that you might not have thought of. So let me just grab this and throw it in the chat. And then we'll go through it quickly because, um, did it paste? Let's see, I'll try it again. Copy. Um, I don't know why it's not letting me. It might have to be an attachment. We had this problem in terms of learning Zoom. Ah, there you there go. go. Okay, it worked. Okay. okay. It worked. Yes. So, so in that letter, you might say, um, I will be mailing you physical materials for this program. Is this the correct address? Um, then, then you can customize their invitation. You say, I'll be sending you the Zoom link with a customized invitation that's colorful and exciting. You can let them know that you'll be opening up the Zoom room 15 minutes beforehand with a beautiful slide that's custom to them that primes people for the event. Um, you can know I'll be sending the recording within 24 hours as a gift. You can say, uh, 
And a disclaimer, please note that virtual events were at the mercy of the internet. So in the instance of a poor connection, I'll do all I can to remedy, right? So these are things that you might not be thinking of. Having that checklist is going to really help you. And then um, so I'd like to- So appreciate this. Oh, go ahead, Ross. I, I so appreciate this. I'm going to talk to you later. I could use lots of tips on Zoom. <laughs> I'm going to give you some more tech tips because it's true that, you know, that tech, tech is our friend mm -hmm. and we can- utilize it to any degree like i can hack any kind of tech right sell for a cell phone you know when your when your work disappears when all of your prospects seem to vanish there is hope there is hope so i'm going to give some tech tips now um and i'll put these in this and these are actually very well curated because i've gone through to many different resources to get these including very secret high tech ones so um, i'm putting this in the chat now these are this is some good stuff now first of all you can tell your clients don't use a zoom background unless you have a green screen half of you're going to disappear it's not going to be an optimized professional right exactly i am backlit i don't know if you could see but i'm backlit right now and i'm actually i'm using not <laughs> it's an emergency light, right? Because, you know, it's what I had. But backlighting is good because it makes you pop out. And mm -hmm. with, you know, webcams shrink us and compact us. So we need that, all the help we can get. Um, if you're demonstrating on a flat table, if you really, there are a lot of people who are offering crafts online and meant to how to's. Don't use a black, back, a black table because the iris will shrink and grow and you'll get a very, um, you know, unfocused moving mess. So use gray for the background. Now, um, my business partner and I, um, we have a Hello San Francisco show, which is a spoof on a deep daytime talk show where we're catty, you know, awful to each other, professional. And so we need a very high level uh, uh, software beyond Zoom. If you want broadcast level quality uh, software, which you're gonna need, if you might wanna be you know, um, competitive, Wirecast through Telestream is at the level that you know, bas professional basketball tele you know, televisors use. And so we're gonna use those, it's, tele te it's Wirecast. It has, it has a pr high price point, but you're also paying for support. Now a less expensive, uh, software is ScreenFlow, which is also through through Telestream. It's not a it's not a, a webcast tool, but it helps you make beautiful videos. Where you know how you've seen them, where the person's shrunk in the corner, and then their whole screen is behind them, and they're moving their cursor, and you can have videos. And there's a lot you could do with with ScreenFlow, and that's a third of the price. So um, also making the message the medium. Um, you know, some effects in magic and also in other mediums are even better online or on Zoom. For example, everybody, if you would, um, put your thumbs down and come on, Ross, what did you do to put your thumbs down? And now lock, lock your, good, good, good. Lock, lock your fingers. Yeah, good. And now everybody twist, keep it straight and twist. Is it working? What are, what are we doing? What are, what are we, we supposed looking to do? for? It's, 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 a, it's a, if your thumbs are down, I'm going to tip this to you because it's, it's, it's you know, I'm going to reveal a little magic tonight like I did with my uh, screen thing is, you know, you do this and there's no way to turn it. You cannot turn your, but what I did was like, I pointed to Elizabeth and I readjusted so I could do the full turn. Anyway, it's just something it's hard right now, but in any case, that's, there's things that work better online and then languaging the product because I can say, you said, join me on Zoom for a magic show. I can, I can tell my client that you're going to have your own customized channel channel to invite your friends to for entertainment and laughs. I have my own customized channel. It's like I'm a TV, you know, studio now, right? So I wanted to offer that. And just the simple thing of like re recalibrating who is your client and do they still have money? Who has money still? And looking at your bottom line. Um, so so all the couple of the last two things I'll mention is that um, I don't, I'm not called to do a Patreon page, but, but there are organizations that are philanthropic or nonprofit. They might do a Patreon page to, to help pivot, to help bring some revenue. What in. kind of page? Um, a Patreon, you know, these, these uh, jump Kickstarter, Patreon. Patreon is more you give, you offer regular um, 
content and they just donate what they can. Okay. Regularly, regularly. And then, and then there's the whole thing about really, you know, well, people are like, whoa, what's next? What's the next earthquake? Financially, I'm telling my clients to look at their bottom line and three specific things. Look at your burn rate. How quick are you going through your money and what can you cut? Like I just said, buy audible.com. You know, I, I, you know, I don't really need you that bad, right? And then, so look at your burn rate. And the second thing is, what's your run rate? How much have you stockpiled in your bank that you can work with? What's liquid? And the last is your run rate, and that is your overhead. How, if you had zero income, how far could you go? Yeah, you know, with that, and so, so, and knowing those numbers is going to help you relax and know, and then help you make, help you act wisely and uh, appropriately. Or maybe not relax. <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a whole session about that yesterday, about managing your cash flow, even if you have irregular income. It's just like mm -hmm. seeing where you are and what you're doing. So, yeah, that was great. And you said something about um, finding out which of your clients still have money. And Juliet, you had a great session today about your assessment. Is this the sort of thing that you could use your assessment for? Uh, she probably, do you mean, I was going to say, she probably didn't see it. Could you use yes. the assessment for it? Um, yes and no. It would depend on how you presented it, but definitely the part that, that runs on algorithms uh, where you ask about investment would, might be helpful to, to talking to the right people instead of, uh, you know, wasting your time with the whole field. Uh, you guys weren't on the call, but the software I use breaks down the leads into high, medium, and low commitment. People self-select oh. based on money, commitment, and appointments. So, um, I, you saying, know, yes, I, yes, I'm interested in, in learning more and working with Juliet or not. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, we don't position it exactly like that, but yes, you probably could use something like that. She says it much more gracefully, but yes. <laughs> I probably get, I got to say it's true because money does burn a hole in my wallet. Ah, it's so it, awesome, there, Heather. <laughs> I, I would I would love to see you uh, help you know help me you know liven that in that. So so I'd love to know Ross what 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 opportunities you're seeing in terms of these happy hours you know after the meeting. Have you been approaching clients for that? Yeah, we had our first one on Thursday. Uh, we, 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 we've been careful not to call it a happy hour in, in respect um, and, and acknowledgement that these are challenging times. So we call it, we call it socials. It and uh, people are um, so receptive and people are feeling the need to socialize. And so to, to be able to be introduced to people across the country over a glass of wine uh, with uh, a brand that we, we feel very grateful that they feel connected to and uh, share um, is always a, a conversation starter and, and, and uh, tremendous lubrication for, for um, getting to know each other. Um, and uh, of course, these, these are free to attend. So we did not, in, you know, we did not go in attending, intending to make sales. It wasn't a, a sales opportunity. But uh, we had 37 people, our very first, and we capped it at 30. And Jennifer, God love her, just couldn't say no. And, and at 37, she said, no, we can't manage this number of people. And so we opened up the following week, and that filled up halfway and already. And so, um, um, unfortunately, not everybody showed up. So we had maybe about 34. But uh, the point is, is that uh, people went out online and bought wine. I mean, we, we made... Uh, probably over a thousand dollars worth of sales uh, just from um, people feeling connected and wanting to carry on the party. So it was really, we felt supported and loved and, and, and tried to, uh, and, and really tried to lead with love. Tell me how you structured that. So it was a social, but what mm -hmm. were they going to get their own wine or did you supply wine? How did that look? Well, uh, most of the people uh, are wine club members. Uh, so they have sellers. And so everybody talked about, you know, they held up, you know, which wine that they were drinking. And we did a little poll and asked people how long they knew us and, um, and what wine they were drinking that evening. And so that was a, a, something we were able to sort of, you know, 
uh, build a conversation around. That's and then, um, and then, you know, we, we chatted, you know, until it was r obvious that we couldn't all chat together. And then Jennifer randomly put people into breakout rooms, you know, four to five people in breakout rooms for 10 minutes at a time. So, um, you know, it, it was sort of like being on the Star Trek Enterprise. All of a sudden you'd zoom in to someplace, you know, <laughs> and zoom out. And, wow. and, and, and you didn't know who you were going to be with and you had 10 minutes. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was fun. It was, uh, thoroughly entertaining. And then, as I mentioned, we had a, um, a beautiful and, and talented, uh, woman from the South of France, a gypsy performer who was singer songwriter who did a, a set and, and she was also a participant in, 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 in all of the meetings. So people got to know her. And by the time she performed, which was towards the end of the end of the evening, um, people already felt a connection to her and, and uh, that helped sort of, helped sort of, um, I guess, uh, uh, create more connective tissue. That's you know, and so much of it is about engagement. And, you know, it's mm -hmm. like what Heather does is getting people engaged. What Ross does, we were just talking about, was getting people engaged. This is a, a huge part of getting people to really connect and feel part of it rather than sitting in the meeting and you know doing your facebook on the phone on the other side so right. so this is really wonderful i love this well you said something heather that i'm really guilty of which is because i we do a lot of zoom meetings and i find myself you know like pulling out my nail clippers you know and and you know doing doing <laughs> <laughs> finding myself like like fully distracted just because it's very hard to stay to your point elizabeth engaged on 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 mm -hmm. this, these little screens and so um uh that's why we we you know really at the last minute we said well let's bring in an enter bring in an entertainer and mm -hmm. uh and uh it was a total roll of the dice we didn't know how the sound was going to be you know we hadn't heard her before uh, it was um, just, you know, really within a, in the last, you know, maybe hour before our, our event, you know, we said, you know, can you do this? And uh, she just, just Johnny on the spot, set up a little studio, put a microphone together. And um, so that was an experiment that worked. See, um, I love that. I hope that you put that out there because there is a model. You, you hired an entertainer, yes. you hired an unemployed entertainer at this time and you gave her hope you know, and a whole lot more. So thank you for doing that and share, share that information because other organizations could be hiring so many other, you know, yeah. people out there. I have an opera singer friend who's mixing cocktails on, on YouTube, on Facebook Live, you know, it's just because, because she's got no work. So she's, well, she could be singing and cocktails. doing cocktails. <laughs> yes. yeah. yeah. It's just, it's been, it's been quite something. So, uh, yeah. It Here's a metaphor. It's like this Rubik's cube. It's like we've got to figure out. We've we've got here a puzzle, and that is, it's a it's a whole you know that it's a whole new you know opportunity, and so we could you know just try to you know figure it out, or we could come together and as a group, in expertise and in community, let's all count to three as a group, and we'll see if we can solve this in midair. Are you guys ready? Here we go. One, One, two, two three. three. Good job, you guys. You saw oh, man. I couldn't even do I... that turning it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Heather, do you find, I, I mean, as I'm talking to um, some of the people that, that I talk to on a daily basis that work for big companies and they're working at home for the first time, do you see a space where in the future these bigger companies are going to realize that we can do this online and we don't need the overhead of the office space anymore? Yes, I had this debate with my business partner. She said, no, I work, I, you know, when she used to work for Wells Fargo, they, they did not like it. They don't, didn't like those meetings and they're going to want to be with people again. And I said, I said, I agree. And when people see the money they're saving, and yeah. how creative people are going to get around creating very interesting online experiences. They are going to, yes, I do see that. I'm involved in consciousness hacking communities and I have the VR headset 
And I have a wonderful um, application called TRIP, it's T-R-I-P-P, -P, and it's a meditation app to where you put that you're in a virtual world and you hear a soothing voice and it, you, you follow this thing for breath in, breath out. So it's a meditation guide. And then there are birds coming at you and coins and you need to make the coin hit the bird and explodes beautifully. And so when VR comes in, you can show up in a meeting as an alien from Mars right? You, you know, it's all, so it's good. Yes, I, it's, this is really going to fast forward that. I think so too. I think that a lot of people are, are going to see that virtual meetings to get things done are going to be more and more of this. Um, and what you don't get on virtual meetings are the random conversations in line at a coffee that you get the coffee line that you have at a conference and you know and the going off and having lunch with somebody at a conference that's what we miss so um also i think it depends on whether you're somebody who's happy working alone you know are you an introvert or an extrovert so oh. You know, I'm, I'm actually quite used to being alone. I'm kind of a hermit and my mom was kind of a hermit. My youngest sister is just dying because she doesn't have her dance class and she doesn't have her friends and she doesn't have her squash games because she really gets her juice from other people. It's very hard. Yeah. So. I'm wondering if you would get rid of office politics. I don't miss that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an, e that's an eternal ever, <laughs> probably started with the cavemen, like whose, <laughs> whose fire was better and whose cave was better decorated. And, uh, <laughs> and, I don't and know whose that's woman had longer hair to pull her along by. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you yeah. think those cave paintings were about? You know, <laughs> is my yeah. cave better than your cave? <laughs> those weren't buffaloes, no. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah. Think that, I think there will be a new normal. Um, and I think uh, for us, this, uh, this model uh, will persist. And uh, we will um, also, when the time permits, re-engage in our travel around the country to visit our wine club members. Uh, mm. And I look forward to that because those, those personal connections, um, do, they are palpable. Um, uh, those... those um, that, that kind of flesh and blood uh, aura connections uh, just cannot happen online. And so we just, it's, this has just expanded the palette. Um, and I'm, I'm really quite grateful for it. Um, I'm, I'm grateful that uh, uh, it, it did fast forward us. And I, I, I'm also grateful for what it's doing for the planet. Um, and that doesn't mean that I don't have compassion for the pain and suffering and um, you know the the um, you know that people are enduring on all levels, but the, the, this 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 quiet time on the planet, this introspection, this time with, within ourselves, is I think doing the planet a favor. And I think uh, I, I'm I'm praying that we we learn something from that. You know, you know, in the conversations I'm having with people that are working from home, mostly customer service reps, people like that, that are working from home for the first time, is almost every single one of them is telling me they don't miss their commute. They almost, it's yep. almost like they have an hour or two, sometimes three hours of time that they have, you know, gotten back in some way. And I've even talked to some that are just like, I'm, I'm bored. Like, I don't, I don't even know how to fill it. So mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty, a pretty cool advantage of this is, you know, not only the planet from we're not going to be driving as much many cars, um, especially if you live in Los Angeles or San Francisco, someplace like that, but um, just the, the giving back of time that people lose doing that every day. You know, My I'm sure people cleaner. will find ways of filling it and yeah. making us fill it, you know, that's the, I can see bosses saying, well, we know you're not commuting, so you know, mm -hmm. do a couple extra hours. <laughs> well, my, my house is cleaner than it has been. I've lived in this home for 30 years and my, my whole office and bedroom suite um, feel like it's staged now. You know, I mean, <laughs> it is clean under, like everything is clean. 
Oh, you've got to come to my house. That's not happening where we are. <laughs> Mine is too, and my patio is very nicely. It gets early in the season. We'll probably get some freezing weather this week, but my patio is like landscaped, and I'm like, yes. I'm a month early. <laughs> To share my my hope for this, um, I, I I heard some a lot of wise thought leaders say that our technical ability has far far surpassed our analog level of consciousness. There is such a disconnect with how far we have technology and how we are evolutionary. Like our manner of speech and behavior is is just right next to people in the 20s and 30s. In the 80s, right? Because those mannerisms, the habits, we're stuck in there. You know, we have uh, sensibilities from, you know, bullock cart. And then there's tech, you know, that increases by 10 times every two years. So this is, this is my vision, that we take the prima materia the simple material of our humanity and our tech, and together we shape-shift it through time, attention, and community and compassion to create something beautiful like this origami bird. <laughs> that's, that's a metaphor for the opportunity, because there's a lot of conversations that could be had about what's really going on and the why and the higher power and, you know, but I just think this is, you know, what's so is what's so. And then we get to use, use this to create an empowered up level possibility. And that's my hope that we, since we have all been put on this enforced retreat for this mm -hmm. length of time, just to, whoa, Bessie, you know, cleaning up our internal and, and external worlds that we can come to it anew and maybe not get ripped from ourselves so quickly by the demands that, you know, it's like tech has become the boss of us. Ask anyone with a cell phone. I, mm. I had a friend, her, she, she took her cell phone from her teenager as a behavioral thing and her teenager started physically shaking. She turned white. She went into cold sweat. She was having panic attack shock um results from her mother taking her cell phone away i mean it's really it's it's kind of wired now so i think i'd go I, through I, the same thing say again mm -hmm. <laughs> i do yeah i'd go through the same thing I'm, I'm just kidding but you know <laughs> when I, but i'm, I'm I addicted to it thing. yeah it is a totally. addiction so so we can't say no to it, but we can read it in a new way and, and work with it. Like, you know, that's how comedians, they write jokes about it. You know, they turn it, they, they pivot it. Mm -hmm. I see that we have a panelist who's raised his hand, George Tucker. Are you still Elizabeth, with us? we yeah? can't hear you. Oh, there you go. Ah. Okay. No, we have, a, we have an attendee who raised his hand. Oh. And uh, oh. um, George Tucker, did you have a question? Uh, I'm going to just say. How many attendees do we have, just out of curiosity? We're, we're down to six right now. <laughs> We've had yeah, people have kind of come and gone during the day. There's um, everybody who watched online right now as well, too. Some of those have moved over there. So. Oh, OK. Some have moved over there. OK. Um, how do we get to George with the hand raise, Scott? Uh, I've asked oh. him. I've allowed him to talk if he wants to talk. OK. It looks he's like muted. he's muted. You're muted. Sorry, hey, I, I was raising my hands fixing the plumbing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. appreciate the show. Thank you. Okay, great, great, Thanks. great. That's great. Well, let me share some fun. Okay, because we're here, we have a few minutes, and I want to invite everybody listening now and later to remember that. It's nice when life runs smooth as silk, but how would we know the difference? How would we know it was? How could we appreciate those moments if we didn't have knots that appear? Knots that are movable. They are movable. We can shift them around, but using our perspective, we can even melt through them. We can take them off. So I invite every person listening to this to think of their biggest knot their biggest owl that just keeps persisting, whatever it is, whether it's a general fear or a specific current charge, and just imagine them massaging it, massaging it until it melts away. Because instead of 
looking at the holes in our life, we can look through those holes to a whole new paradigm of possibility. And that's what the summit is doing. And that's why I'm so grateful for your, your having organized it, Juliet and Elizabeth. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank Scott you. too. Scott too. Scott did it too. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and Scott. Sorry, Scott. You're just so frozen. I've... <laughs> no, where are you at, dude? Get on here. Yeah. Beautiful smile. Yeah. He's, he, he must have a bedhead today. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> all right. For all the right. emails, Scott. Yeah, thanks, Scott. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Heather, where are you located? I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. How about oh. you? You're, you're in Sonoma, yeah. Yeah, I'm in Sebastopol. So where, Sebastopol. where, in, the, where in the Bay Area are you? I am right next to Berkeley in El Cerrito. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Okay. That's where my dog comes from. But my heart goes out to you, Ross, because, you know, when all that was happening, all the fires, that was when I first met my face mask. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and those, that's the face mask I'm still using. Really? Yes. <laughs> I mean, I bought a box of them then, and I, I was very glad um, when this happened. I said, oh, I, I have face masks. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in many ways, many of us, as long as we're not in a, hot, a disease hotspot, I keep thinking, you know, we're not having bombs dropped on us most of the time. We're not losing our homes due to a forest fire or, you know, 10 minutes to escape, et cetera. So I think that that's, uh, that's uh, a lot to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And also to acknowledge that a lot of people have lost loved ones and a lot of people are working incredibly hard. Um, and just really grateful to have internet. I've, I've, a lot of places I go, I don't have internet unless I go and make it, you know, find a place with internet. So um, it's, uh, it's useful to be grateful for continuing services. There's so much to be grateful for. And I think yeah. we have an obligation to, uh, to convey and to reside in hope. That's because uh, the media is uh, not our friend in all of this. Uh, and we have to pay very close attention to how much we uh, consume. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's important that we're um, uh, tremendously conscious of, of the media that we consume because it is robbing people of hope. It is. You remember the McCarthy era when I shared this with Elizabeth? You remember how it, when McCarthy was finally nailed to the wall and he finally stopped destroying lies? And, and hearing someone said, have you no decency, sir? That's what I'm saying to the media. It's like, really? How far would you go, my friends? Mm -hmm. Well, that's a whole other conversation. That's a whole other summit. That's a whole other summit. I'd like to talk about prosperity and the many levels of prosperity and the generosity that I'm seeing outpouring is beyond measure. What I'm seeing in all of my communities, my spiritual communities, my magic communities, we had the world's largest gathering of magicians recently. 60,000 people came to a free magic conference put on by two guys in their 30s who are amazing. And what it invites me to ask of all of us is where is our real currency? And what can we do to take our current level of abundance in all the ways that we offer it and how can we just pivot it just turn it a little into an even greater gift to share with the world hmm. right what do we have that we can exponentially send out because that's that's the gift and opportunity and that's what's happening in the summit and i'm hoping you know listeners are going to keep sending the love it's just it's just great, you know, and, and what, what you've done there, Ross, with creating that uh, wonderful social hour and giving people, because, you know, there's a lot, I'm in, I'm in way too many trainings, you know, I'm in trainings and I just, you know, let's have a break. Like tonight I'm going to be performing at a global, um, it's a global healing show through the, uh, through uh, Deborah Gusti who puts out, she created the Harmony Oh, Festival. yeah, she lives yeah. right near me. I know Deborah. Deborah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, we're gonna be on there with Fantuzzi and uh, Gary Marks, the, uh, you know, the L L L Venus, you know, Minerva from Mars and, and um, it's an online- Oh, I know Kim too. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know all the people. They're, so, so the, and they're all doing it for free and we're all gonna come together and entertain each other and just love each other and have a community. And, and that's, that's, you know, we weren't doing that before. That's yeah. a gift of the new normal. That is a gift of the new normal, the things that people have learned to do and 
and the, and you know the performances that you see online all the time and so forth is really very exciting. So and, the, well, and that's that's the irony of this whole um, pandemic is that on one hand we have um, a recognition that we're all one, right? That this is this is a human uh, this is a human challenge that transcends b boundaries, borders, um, uh, ethnicities. Uh, uh, beliefs. And um, on the other hand, we have a, a, a new level of nationalism and jingoism because of the science, who, whoever controls the science is going to be able to serve their constituents the soonest. And so there is a, while the scientists themselves are um, open source in, in this research, the governments, the politicians are jockeying for control of uh, who, who discovers this virus. All over the there, world. There is going yeah. to be a shortage. And the people who get it first are the people, are the people who are going to serve, be serve the first. And that's kind of the job of our politicians, ironically, is to take care of their people. And it's, 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 a, it's a push me, pull you. And I'm, I'm challenged by, the, by, the, by that tension. By whoever gets what first, Ross? Whoever discovers the, 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 the um, vaccine or cure. The vaccine first. I guess so, but I've been talking to, um, I have some friends who are physicians and they're so excited about the plasma, you know, the plasma from people, the convalescent plasma from people who've already had it. And they say, if you've had this, give blood because that's hugely valuable. And he's, they're blown away that how um, medical physicians all over the world are working together. Um, yes, and yes just, the, 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 the scientists and physicians are working together. It's the governments that are not. not yeah, yes. so maybe it will be impossible. That's, and that's the push me, pull you that, that, that we're all going to be, you know, need to be cognizant of so that we-, it, we Aware, uh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. So that we can influence our politicians to do the right thing. Yes. Yeah. Is that, is that mm. possible? I don't know. <laughs> Vote. I don't know. Yeah. But we have well. to be hopeful. Right. Yes. There we go. Be we hopeful. have to be hopeful. Yes. And 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 the only way we can be hopeful is quit watching the media because that's yes. where we see them acting the way they are. <laughs> right. Exactly. Don't, don't encourage them. Exactly. <laughs> well, I was so moved by when when everyone was told to you know to shelter in place and just how you know people talk about the few that have and I'm sure the media brings out the people but so many have and what we said when we all went to shelter in place as a whole planet we said we will sacrifice our career and our financial stability to save us all we yeah. said that and you know actions speak louder than words and we may and everybody's still saying it we love mm -hmm. you. We love each other. We're going to do all we can to make to save each other. And I just think I'm so moved by that. We we're finding out what we're made of. It's like a pop quiz. And we're finding out, you know, what we've got. Yeah, well, let's hope it continues. And, you know, when we, when we, when stores open up again, that we go back to stores and all those good things. So, meanwhile, um, pivoting, here we are, you know, talking about peace and pivot. And, uh, I really want to thank everybody for all the effort and Scott and Juliet and all the effort that, uh, that you've put in and to our attendees who've been with us all the way through. Thank you so much. And those who just came for a small part, I hope this has been helpful. Please put something in the chat if you, if this has been useful, if anybody has, yes, uh, uh, Laura likes us as all just the hardcore, she says. Um, <laughs> Laura, I think Laura and Julianne have been with us the whole time, haven't they? Yeah. Pretty much. So, and Gia, congratulations Gia to you. Yeah. Yes. Gia has too, I think. Yeah. So. so uh, has, has this been helpful? Do you guys want to type in your thoughts about it? Our attendees? How about on Facebook? If they're still awake? Yes. They're shy. Yes. Can I hear you, Scott? about to end because we're hitting the four-hour period on the- Uh-oh, uh-oh, okay. Uh -oh, okay. okay. All right. All well, right. thank you all for showing up. We really appreciate it. This is very helpful. Thank you, Ross and, and Heather, for sharing your pivots. And uh, inspiring. Really, yeah, yes. and your magic. Cool. <laughs> very Thanks for inviting me. So, and and I and, and when, when, when times permit, I invite you all as my guests to my home. Oh, okay. I would love to do that. Right, I haven't been to Sonoma forever since I moved mm -hmm. from California. Mm -hmm. June. 
I'll be there. Beautiful place. I'm Look at her, place. June. Yes. Give him dates. Day. That's the plan. Book. Yes, okay. I can. Remember what you asked for, Ross. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> I'll just send you some free wine. We'll be fine. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for having been part of this. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.